October 2024 monthly market update coming at you right now. There's a lot of people that are wondering what's going on because honestly, there's not a lot of news in the news about real estate right now. It's kind of on the back burner. And that's why we are seeing more of just the same. And that is a balanced market. We are going to talk about the sources of information that you're collecting to determine if it's a good time to buy or sell right now. Some of those examples are going to be on the media. Let's look online and we can look here at Economic Times where they're talking one day about everything is going to be amazing. And then just a couple days later, we are talking about the world is coming to a crash. And then we have YouTubers that are going on about our foreclosures. Well, what's really going on with foreclosures? Yes, they are three times as much as they were just a couple years ago. But that's because a couple years ago, there was only like five or 10 a month. And now we're up to 20 or 30 a month. Here's the thing. Are you guys familiar with the term clickbait? How about this one? Phoenix down to 30%. Yeah, I'd like to know where they got that information. Look at what the median sales price has done in the last year. How about two years? Although we did see a market correction. So if you're waiting for that market crash or the market correction, it's already behind us. And it happened in May of 2022 when interest rates went from a 3%. I remember when buyers were going three, oh, and then it got all the way up to 8% by the end of the summer of 2022. And then we saw massive deals in December of 2022. So if you listened to my video at that time and took advantage of it, it's only gone up since December 2022. Let's break it down for you guys. What's going on for buyers and sellers in the market and the difference between national news macro news, which means the Phoenix metropolitan area and micro news into the different parts of the Phoenix area and different types of properties, et cetera. So this is how we measure how hot or cold our market is. We talk about an index number where if it's between 90 and 110, that is going to be what we call a balanced market. Anything under 90 is going to be a buyer's market and anything over 110 is a seller's market. Just to give you some, again, you always got to have comparisons. Just to compare to where it was during the psychoness in 2021, it was over 700 in some cases. And where is it today? Today, we are right at about 94, which is a perfect balanced market. But let me say this. This is for the entire greater Phoenix area. Let's take a look at what each area currently looks like. Now that you understand that between 90 and 110 is going to be a balanced market. The higher it is, it's a little bit more on the seller side. And the lower it is, it's a little bit more on the buyer side. Let's take a look. All right. So the city of Phoenix itself. And I'll tell you where I really feel where this is coming from. It's 112. That means it's more of a seller's market. This is going to be in the North Phoenix area. Phoenix encompasses a lot of different parts of the greater Phoenix area. In my opinion, some of the absolute best and some of the absolute worst. So Phoenix is really hard to gauge. But when we look at some other areas like Chandler, Look at how hot Chandler is. And I know it sounds like 127 seems a lot. Again, this was at 700 in 2021. So 127 is a good time to get in. It means that the values are still going up just ever so slightly. If we go to an area like Buckeye, let me explain this. All new construction areas have a much lower market index number because there's a higher mix of new construction in there. So there's definitely more to choose from, except in some of the smaller areas. Let me show you this one. Tolleson. You're probably thinking, what's in Tolleson? There's really just not a lot. What this means is that there's more buyers in this area because of its affordability and honestly, its proximity to downtown, the mountains, Interstate 10, and a lot of new employment. And so it is somewhat of a seller's market. That doesn't mean that buyers can't necessarily get fantastic deals. It just means that you got to move quickly if you find a home you like. Now, if we pick a place like Cave Creek, which is kind of more of a touristy area, right now it's 105. I bet 
um, January, February, this is going to jump right up to about 120. Let's pick Scottsdale, everybody's favorite, 127. So again, this has a lot to do with the fact that Scottsdale is a lot of different things. It's also a ton of Airbnbs. It's luxury buyers. It is vacation rentals. Um, it is a lot of things to a lot of people. Let's go out to Maricopa. Maricopa this is a fantastic time for buyers. Look at this, you guys. Even though the market index number is really low, which means it's a fantastic buy, look at the supply. The supply is insane. There are so many amazing choices um, out in Maricopa. It's unbelievable. And there's a lot of buyers out there, but there's still way more supply. So this is what I mean by you can't just watch these national numbers. They vary greatly from every single city and every single price point. So that I don't make this video two hours long, we're gonna break it down into a couple of little subsections. You're just gonna to have to give us a call to have more of a detailed conversation if you love it, this nitty gritty data. But here is all the homes over the last many years, the monthly average under 2,500 square feet. That's 80% of the sales that we have in the greater Phoenix area. So it is the vast majority. And usually the homes that are above that price point are usually in the luxury arena, if you would. So if we look at these numbers and you bought your home in 2021, yes, you did still see an increase a tad bit in 2022, a 2023, and as we finish the year in 2024. So again, when people talk about prices declining, where we saw the decline was in 2022. And you can see that right here from September 22 to September 23, we did see a 1.7% when we look at the total year. And again, this is why you have to be very careful of the media source or the information source that you're getting your information. If you continue to use YouTube as your information source, be very careful. That's all I got to say. Not all of them have access to this exact data. And without this exact data, they don't have the correct information. I would say the majority of those foreclosures are probably people one of two individuals, homeowners. Number one, they are people that bought their home in 2022 and they don't have enough equity over the last two years in order to sell their home and it not be an out-of-pocket expense. And so it's gone into the pre-foreclosure world, unfortunately. So you have that. And then the second is I hate to say it, but strategic foreclosures. And we've always had those. I think that just became more more relevant or pre prevalent um, when we saw the market crash. And there were a lot of people that just before this, they saw um, what was happening. And so they mortgaged their home as high as they possibly could. They moved that money somewhere else and then they walked away. But either way, those are homes that have very high mortgages tied to them. And that's why there's still not a lot of great deals at the courthouse steps. And I'm not going to say there are none, but it's only a handful or two um, every month. And so for investors, there's very few in our market right now. Definitely not Wall Street. <laughs> If we also look at like how many days are on the market before we go under contract, the median, again, this is the median, so half or above and half or below, um, 31 days. Does that mean after 31 days that the seller is desperate? No, but this is more information for a seller so that when they are taking a listing, they understand what they can expect. Because I'll be honest with you, it, it's kind of stressful to be a seller right now. Because again, everybody has a short-term memory. If you're selling your home and the typical here in the greater Phoenix area, people here only hold their homes like four to seven years. We will see a longer duration now because interest rates are nowhere near the majority of the homeowners here and have in the greater Phoenix area. But typically, it's four to seven years. So if you're buying a home today, the last time you bought a home, you had to move pretty quickly, right? And so 31 days seems like forever. Weekly reductions, weekly price reductions are very synonymous with, again, we talk about the other two times that it's been a fantastic time for buyers. Again, when you look at just last year's numbers, 
yeah, we're up. But if you go back two years ago, we're way down. If you go back several years, we're normal, guys. So if you look at the leading indicators as to why prices would go down, we're already past that. And let me tell you how the sellers have sustained this. And this, again, is on a national way. And it has to do with concessions. And this is what we what I mean when I tell people, if you're not the perfect buyer, this is the perfect market. Meaning that when interest rates come down, we have more buyers in the market that have 20%, that have the, over the 300,000 you know, household median income. So you're not competing with those buyers. Right now, more than 55% of the transactions in the greater Phoenix area have some sort of concessions. Now, that doesn't mean in every single area and that it doesn't mean in every single price point or in every single home, but this is what the average is. Going into the market today as a buyer, you can expect absolutely a seller to buy down your rate and pay for your closing costs. Maybe not entirely, so like I said, it's not in every single area. Here is a little bit of a breakdown based on price. If you look at the, the vast majority of the homes that are currently receiving the most concessions are between $250,000 and $500,000. That is all over the greater Phoenix area. There's different opportunities absolutely everywhere. When you start to get into the luxury market, that doesn't mean that you still can't get concessions. We had a client, it completely blew them away at a one2 uh, price point, we got 2% towards closing costs. Crazy, right? No one wants to waste money. And sellers know right now, this is what it takes to sell their homes. Price negotiations. Again, a lot of people are thinking that, though the list prices are coming way down and prices are going down. And those are list prices. We actually, as a whole, the greater Phoenix area, are just shy of an average of 98% to list price. And if you go back again to what? 2018, that's exactly where we were. That's a normal market. That's a good normals market, to be honest with you. All right, guys, let's wrap this up. What What's going on right now for buyers? I can tell you, average sales per square foot is, year over year is pretty much flat. This is great for a buyer. Not so much for a seller. Again, real estate is a long-term hold. It's not supposed to be only two or three years. And in this kind of a market, we're probably looking at three to five in order to get enough appreciation, pay down your mortgage so that you can sell your home and have a little bit of equity to parlay it into the next community, into the next home. Median sales price is actually going up. So again, those of you who are waiting for the market crash, it's already behind us. It's, it's just not as big as everyone wanted. I hate to say that. I, I mean, I heard so many people out there going, I hate to say this, but I hope the market crashes. Nobody wants the market to crash. I know they think they do, but they don't. This is, this is an excellent report card for the year. Sales over asking price, it's still happening, guys. It's not as much as it did last year. That's hard to believe, right? Homes that are in the best condition, are priced well, are still receiving multiple offers, but they're still giving concessions. That's again, you guys, great time to be a buyer. I just, I can't even tell you, but there are still some homes that sell over asking prices. The seller concessions have increased, not only the amount that they're gonna receive, but the amount, the volume of uh, transactions. So a higher percentage rate of buyers are receiving those services, the assistance. And then of course, the days on the market before contract. Um, it, this It's good for buyers. It's I hate to say it, but it stresses out the sellers a little bit. So when you come in with an offer that's not necessarily perfect, like it might be a list price, but we're asking for a lot of closing costs, or it might be a little bit lower than list price with a lot of closing costs. I, I am telling you, we have been getting our clients the most amazing deals, um, and they are only going to get better between now and the end of the year. My prediction for the first quarter is we're going to see, at least in January and February, we're going to see a lot more of the same. We're going to see more listings and we're going to see more buyers. And it's just going to kind of both come up together. Um, what will happen in the March, April timeframe traditionally is when we have the highest cost per square foot and when the median price usually goes at the highest for the year. I anticipate that that will also be the case. 
and we'll just see it a little bit later in our buyer season, like I said, in the March, um, March, April, May timeframe. And for the buyers, if you're looking for that next window, if December is too soon, the next window is next summer. All right, guys, thanks for chiming in. And if you are wanting to have a more detailed conversation on price point, square footage, get the data, look at some of these charts, just give me a call. We'll set up a Zoom meeting and we'll look through this together. I'm a numbers girl and I look forward to hearing from you. Whether you're thinking about buying right now or in the next year to 18 months, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. These nights or weekends, we got your back wind moving. Phoenix, Arizona. Until next time, see you.